الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله. <coughs> Just a small announcement uh, about the uh, spiritual purification workshop. Uh, Inshallah, we will resume directly after Ramadan. Probably the first of August will be the seventh session because we still have two more sessions to finish the workshop, the spiritual purification. Probably, but yani, uh, wait for an announcement or Inshallah, be here at least. Inshallah. Uh, after Ramadan, we will also be here because the Lord of Shawwal is the same Lord of Ramadan, of course. Uh, Today, um, I was told to speak about Surah Al-Kahf. And there is a very important hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that says, Man qara'a Surah Al-Kahf yawm al the one who recites the Surah Al-Kahf, the chapter called the cave, on Friday, فَهُوَ مَعْصُومٌ مِنْ كُلِّ فِتْنَةٍ تَكُونَ he, will, he is protected from every fitna. فَإِنْ خَرَجَ الدَّجَّالْ عُصِمَ مِنْهُ So when the Dajjal appears, the Dajjal means the Antichrist, he will be protected from his fitna. The word fitna have several meanings in the Arabic language. So the word fitna can mean test. The word fitna can mean temptation. The word fitna can mean turbulation. So before the last days on earth, before the last days on earth, a Dajjal will appear. The Dajjal or the Antichrist will have four main things that he will be able to deceive many people with. He will have fitna to deen, fitna in religion. He, يعني, people will be tested in their religion. He will have fitna of wealth because he will be so wealthy. And he will have fitna of knowledge because he will do scientific amazing things that are amazing scientifically and he would be like surprising people with them. And there will be the fitna of authority because he will be so powerful and he will have a lot of authority. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us to read this specific surah every single week. Why? To save us from the Dajjal. How will it save us from the Dajjal? Through the Barakah of the Surah? If the Prophet wanted us to read this Surah for the Barakah, then the whole Quran is Barakah. And if it's only for the Barakah, he could have said, choose one Surah to read every Friday. But since the Prophet mentioned this surah particularly, then of course there are meanings in the surah that should be renewed in the life of a Muslim at least once every week. To talk about Surah Al-Kahf, we need to know that Surah Al-Kahf consists of 110 verses. All of them are Meccan verses. <coughs> the Quran is either Meccan Quran or Medinan Quran. Either Quran that descended in Mecca or descended in Medina. Or also, descended before Hijrah or after Hijrah. It's called Meccan and Medinan. Even if it was sent down to the Prophet in another place, not in Medina, but after the Hijrah, it is called Medinan Quran. Understand this? What's the difference between them? The verses that descended on the Prophet وسلم, before the Hijrah, which is called the Meccan Quran, deals with Aqeedah. The verses that descended on the Prophet Sallallahu after the Hijrah, which is called Medina and Quran, many of it deal with Sharia. Do's and don'ts. Rarely, rarely, nearly, you, don't, you will not find do's and don'ts in the Meccan Quran. So, chapter or the surah called Al-Kahf consists of 110 verses. All of them are Meccan. 79 of them or I'm, see, I'm sorry, 71 of them are stories. And 39 are either scenes from the hereafter, talking about hellfire, talking about Jannah, or comment, commenting on the stories. So the Quran makes its comments on the stories. <coughs> so those four stories that are the main four stories in Surah Al-Kahf are what can save you from the fitna of the Dajjal. Why? The four stories are, number one, the story of Ashab al-Kahf, which are youth who slept in a cave. 
and they fled from the kuffar into a cave fl fleeing with their religion this story if you understand it it will protect you from fitna al deen the dajjal i said he will come with a turbulation in religion so digesting this story well will help you keep your faith in good shape sound heart the second story is the story of sahib al jannatain or the story of the owner of the two gardens the owner of the two ranches of plants and vines and trees and this story makes you able to pass through the test of wealth which is also one of the fitna of the dajjal the third story is the story of musa wal abd salih moses and the righteous servant of allah people call him in the tafsir al khidr but the Quran said Al Abd al Salih, the righteous servant. This story talks about knowledge. So it also guards you from the fit fitna til ilm, the fitna of knowledge and science and stuff like that. So it makes you know how to deal with knowledge. The fourth story is the story of Dhul Qarnain, the king with the two horns. And it is the story that talks about authority. And here this one saves you from the test of authority. Actually, after those three stories, at the end of the, of the surah, <coughs> there are three messages from Allah. Because those are three verses that start with Qul. Qul means say. Every Qul in the Quran means say, O Muhammad. It's a message from Allah to you through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qul, qul, qul. Three verses that start with qul. So those are three important messages at the end of the surah. The surah, if we want to call it something else, not al-kahf, we would call it the surah of reform. Because it reforms. It reforms three main things in a Muslim. It reforms your aqeedah. It reforms manhaj al-fikr, which means your way of thinking. It makes you think objectively. And the third is it reforms al-qiyam, the values. Aqeedah, thinking, values. So the set of beliefs, the way of thinking, and your set of values. If you open the beginning of the surah, you will find it is dealing with the aqidah. Verse number four and number five, mainly, they even sp ad speak about Christians. I'm not, I, of course, today, I'm not explaining Surah al -Kaf. To explain it all, it may take me 10, 10 lessons, by the way, or 10, 10 episodes at least. But it is actually exploring how to ponder upon Surah Al-Kaf. How can we contemplate on Surah Al-Kaf? So if you have the Quran with you, bring it. Or, or yeah, bring it up on, on your iPads or on your iPhones or bring a, a Quran. You, you will use it a lot. So if you want, bring, uh, take one from the shelf. You can also give me one. Because I have here the comments only. Alaikum. Jazakallah khair. You don't have one bigger than this? Ah. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Take this and give me this. Okay. Bismillah. Surat Al Kaf. Here before Maryam. Directly before Maryam. Surat Al Kaf. Okay. It starts by Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja qayyiman liyunthira ba'san shadidan min ladunhu wa yubashir al-mu'minin al-ladhina ya'maluna al-salihati anna lahum ajran hasana ma kithina fihi abada Verse number four Wa yunthira al-ladhina qalu attakhadha Allahu walada Allah sent this book for 
many reasons, and he's explaining the reasons. Among them is to warn those who claim that Allah have taken a son, someone as son. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ وَلَا لِآبَائِهِمْ كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَذِبًا The verse says, they have no knowledge about it, neither them nor their forefathers. It's a big word that comes out from their mouth. It's a mere lie. You sense the tone of anger. There's a tone of anger here in the verse from this lie that is told against Allah. <coughs> I want you to roll all the way to the end of the surah, to the last verse. Bring the last verse, number 110. It says what? Qul. It's one of the verses that has messages. Huh? I said there are three messages at the end of the surah. Because it starts with Qul. Qul. Say, O Muhammad, tell them. It's a message from God to you. Qul. Innama ana basharum mithlukum. I am just a man like you. So the aqidah of the Muslims, according to the Quran, is that Prophet Muhammad is a man like us. Exactly like us? No, there's a difference. Which is coming next. Yuha ilayya. But I receive revelation. So the aqidah of the Muslims, according to this verse in the Quran, is that Prophet Muhammad is a man like us, but he receives revelation. We don't receive revelation. If someone tells you something else, that Prophet Muhammad didn't die, Prophet Muhammad never dies, Prophet Muhammad, then he is here conflicting with the Quran. Say, I am a man like you, but I receive revelation. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ What is revealed to him? Two things. أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ That your God is one God. Tawheed. And فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ The one who wants to meet his Lord, which means the one who seeks salvation. What should he do? فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Let him do good work. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحْدًا And not associate anyone with his Lord in the worship. So here, the Quran is telling us about the concept of salvation. The concept of salvation according to Islam is what? It's a bird that flies with two wings. With one wing it will fall down. It will not fly. The first wing is faith. The second wing is good work. That's why all the way in the Quran you find faith associated with good work. Those who believe and do good work. The one who believes and, do good work and does good work. So it's always, but of course, faith always comes first. Except in this verse. This is the only verse in the Quran where good work is mentioned before faith. Why? To draw the contrast with the people who were criticized in the beginning of the surah. In the beginning of the surah, the Christians were criticized. Christians, most Christians, by the way, they believe that faith alone saves if you meet them in Stratford, they tell you, I want you to believe in Jesus as Lord. Why? To be saved. So if I believe in Jesus as Lord, God forbid, I'll be saved? Yes. Okay. Guess that I now believe in Jesus as Lord. What else should I do? Nothing. Just stay like that until you die. See? Stagnation. It's a very uh, uh, static concept. Barren concept. But if you want to be saved according to Islam, say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Okay, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Am I saved? No, not yet. Okay, what can I do? Do good work. Okay, I did some good work. Is it enough? No. Why? No one knows if Allah accepted or not. Maybe you didn't have good intentions. But what can I do? Do more good work. Smile in the face of a brother. It's like spending in charity. Okay, I smiled in his face. Enough? No, not yet. Do more good work. So this is a static concept, this is a dynamic concept. This is a barren concept, this is a fruitful concept. So the surah deals with your aqidah. 
So when verses like that come, you shouldn't just let it pass. Stop and ponder upon it. Reflect. In the story of Ashab al-Kahf, the story of the, the youth who slept in the cave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in verse number 14, saying, وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنْ نَدْعُوَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِلَهَا لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَا شَطَطَ Allah says, and we strengthened their hearts. So they stood up and said, it didn't say and they said, it said, they stood up and said, gives you the sense of strength, youth, confidence, bravery, courage. And they said, we shall not call any other Lord besides him. So you don't call upon anyone except Allah. Brothers, Abu Bakr Siddiq, <coughs> when he was the Khalifa, he was on his camel and his whip that he's using to direct his camel with, it fell down from the camel. So he had to go all the way down to bring his whip and go up. So his, one of his uh, assistants was walking next to the camel. He said, what did you do? Why didn't you tell me to just give you your whip? Why did you go all the way down and take all this hassle to go over the camel again? He said, I'll tell you a secret. Me, among 50 others, among the companions, Prophet Muhammad took the pledge from us not to ask anyone for anything. That we don't ask people anything. We only give, but we don't take. This is a Muslim. We shall never ask anyone except him. لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَنْ شَطَطَ If we do so, then we are definitely astray. On the commentary on the story, in the comments of the Quran, verse number 26, it says, قُلِ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثُوا لَهُ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَبْصِرْ بِهِ وَأَسْمِعْ It means, say, only Allah knows best how long did they stay in the cave. He knows the unknown of the, of course in some translations, the unseen, but the ghaib, unseen is not a good translation. Ghaib means anything unknown, whether unseen, unheard, and un so on. So uh, he knows the unknown of the heavens and the earth. Abasr bihi wa asma. It means he's the best hearer, the best seer. Listen to this. مَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِن وَلِيٍ وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا They have no protector besides him. And he does not consult anyone in his decisions. This should be your aqeedah. You don't have any protector except Allah. No one else will protect you. Only Allah. If Allah protects you, you shouldn't fear anyone except him. When you are in your mother's womb, your life in seconds was recorded and your sustenance was recorded. No one can play with this. So no one in the world can do anything for you. That's why we look at tyrants who kill people in the streets, whether in Libya or Gaza or Egypt or anywhere. And we say those are poor people because they can't do anything. None of the martyrs who were martyred in Rab'ah or in Gaza was killed by them actually, no. They will just take the, the sin. But actually, his life ended at this point, And it was going to end anyway. So when the maximum that they can do is to put a bullet in your head, at the moment that you were supposed to die, then there is nothing that they can do. Don't worry about your life or your rizq. Worry about anything else. The problem is people keep worrying about their lives and rizq. In the story of Sahibul Jannatain, the next story, which is the story of the owner of the two, all of this we are talking about aqeedah. How the Quran is correcting your aqeedah. These are means that should be renewed in your life every week. 
not just scan, scan, scan quickly like that with your, with your, with your eyes. Verse number 37 and 38. You know, the man was, the wealthy man, he was so arrogant because of his wealth. And he thought that his gardens will never perish and he will always be wealthy and he thought that it's something personal in him. No, he forgot that Allah gave him. So his own, uh, he, he has a friend or a neighbor <coughs> who's Muslim and he's giving him da'wah now. So he tells him, قَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُهُ His friend told him, وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ When he is into dialogue with him, أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ Are you committing kufr against the, your creator? I could have understood here that he tells him, الَّذِي رَزَقَكَ against your sustainer because he is actually arrogant because of his money but no he is reminding him with the first first uh, uh, the first thing in your relationship with Allah is that Allah is the creator so number one he is reminding he is your creator are you committing kufr disbelief against your creator who created you from dust and then from a um, drop of semen, and then he fashioned you as a man. Nay, my Lord is Allah. See, the other one was bragging with his wealth. This one is bragging too with his aqidah. He's proud, not of himself. He's proud of his Lord. He's proud, not of himself, of his Lord. وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ بِرَبِّي أَحَدًا And I, I'm not going to associate anyone with my Lord. So when you read this, and you say, yeah, then I have to be proud of being Muslim. Why? Because it's the biggest gift in the world. When someone gives you a gift, you're happy. What if you are given the biggest gift, and the most expensive gift, and the most valuable gift in the world, which is that you were born Muslim and that you were guided to Islam. Why is it a gift? If we're asking Christians, they will say the biggest gift is to become Christian. Jews will say Judaism. And everyone will sing his song? No. Why is it the biggest gift, brothers? I said before here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created different types of creatures. Allah created non-living objects water soil and allah created a higher rank creature than non-living objects plants and allah created a higher rank creature than plants animals animals and allah created a higher rank creature than animals humans and allah have made the system in this world like that every creature will be in the service of the higher rank creatures not the opposite Bless you. Alhamdulillah. Allah. Everyone will be in the service of the higher rank creatures, not the lower rank creatures. And subhanAllah, you find that water and soil, <coughs> they serve plants. Plants don't serve water and soil. And they serve animals. Animals drink water and walk on the soil. And they serve us. Plants serve animals, because animals are vegetarian, well, some of us also. And animals serve us. And we are the worshippers of Allah, if we're Muslims. But if I were to worship another god, if I were to worship a human being, I have to go one rank down. To worship a human being. If I were to worship an animal, one billion people worship cows. I have to go two ranks down to worship an animal. So it's a gift that you were guided to Islam or that you were born Muslim. The commentary of the Quran on this story in verse number 44 says, هُنَالِكَ الْوَلَايَةُ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا 
The only protection is that of God, the true God. So this is very important for you always to keep in mind. Oh, every week when you read Surah Al-Kahf, keep in mind that all protection only comes from Allah. Also, before leaving the axis of reform of Aqeedah, we need to speak also about the scenes of the Day of Judgment because Allah brings the scenes of the Day of Judgment. Here in verse number 52, 52, it says, فَدَعَوْهُمْ فَلَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَهُمْ وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَوْبِقًا Allah is just. Those who worship other gods besides Allah, Allah will give them a chance and will tell them, okay, call your gods. Let them come and help you. Let them come and reward you. Because the problem is, some people say, hey, come on, because I'm not Muslim, you say that I'm going to hellfire? So where do you want to go then? No, I was good. I volunteered in tsunami. I helped the Palestinians. Said, okay, okay, good, good, good. But the issue is, you were working for another God. You, you were working for another company. Why do you want my company to pay you? Bring your company to pay you. You're working for Microsoft. Let Microsoft pay you, but not Oracle. Oracle will not pay you. And you are doing good work also. So here Allah is telling them. Here Allah says, and at, at that day, it will be, they will be told, Allah will tell them, call my partners that you claim them to be my partners. And they will call upon them. There are people who will call upon Buddha. There are people who will call upon Jesus. There are people who call upon Krishna. So they will call them. فَلَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَهُمْ But they will not respond to them. وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَوْبِقَةً And we set a deadly gulf between them. Because they will start calling them bad things. Hey, you tricked us. Hey, why aren't you helping us? And the other would say, who told you to worship me? And they will start a fighting with each other. This means that there, there cannot be more than one true religion, brothers. The problem is, yeah, in order to live peacefully and coexist, all religions are right. This is nonsense. We, can, we have to coexist with others. We have to live peacefully with others. But we have to understand that it's, this is either black or yellow. If someone says this is yellow, someone says this is black, you cannot say. It's very hypocritical to say both are right. No, both are not right. It's either black or yellow. So this needs to be very clear for you. Yes, alhamdulillah, I am on the straight path. But am I really following the straight path? So Islam is the straight path. Am, am I really following? Verse number 102. Also, one of the scenes of the, 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 the hereafter. It says, أَفَحَسِبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَن يَتَّخِذُوا عِبَادِي مِن دُونِي أَوْلِيَاءِ إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا جَهَنَّمَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ نُزُلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak and say, did they think that they could take my servants as masters instead of me? You feel here the tone of bitterness. Anger. Why? It's like blaming us. Why did you do so? Allah says, did they think, those who committed kufr, that they could take my servants, like Jesus and Buddha, those are the servants of Allah. Instead of me as masters, we have prepared hell as the disbelievers' resting place. Talking about another axis from reformation of Aqeedah, there is the reformation of the way of thinking. Manhaj al fikr. How do we think? Brothers, we don't think objectively. We don't ascertain things. We care a lot about things that makes no sense sometimes. And we ignore the important things. So the Quran comes here to reform. To reform. But our problem is that we just open emails and forward the emails without ascertaining, without making, is this true in it or not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah 4, in, uh, uh, verse number 4 and verse number 5, the same two verses that reformed our aqidah, they will reform our way of thinking. وَيُنذِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا It means, verse number 4, 
and to warn those who claimed that Allah has a son. What's the mistake? مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ وَلَا لِآبَائِهِمْ They have no knowledge about it, neither them nor their forefathers. So their mistake is, they took action and they believed in something that they have no knowledge about it. Which means, don't talk about something if you don't really have knowledge about it. Sometimes you sit with people who talk about stocks. And you know, you're a poor person, you don't have any stocks, but you feel like it's very embarrassing. You want to talk, so you say, yeah, I think the stock of Microsoft will be uh, in increasing. Uh, you just want to talk. And then what happens? Someone sits there, he sees you wearing a suit and a tie. He thinks that, wow, this man looks like he's a stockbroker or something. He goes and he puts all his money in Microsoft stocks and he loses his wealth because of you. So this is the, the problem is, don't talk about something except if you have knowledge about it. It reforms. So every time you read this, yeah. They didn't have knowledge about it, neither them nor their forefathers. Verse number 15. This is amazing. This next one is amazing. The youth who slept in the cave said, What's their mistake? Those are our people. They took other gods as gods beside Allah. If they just have clue, if they just have evidence, which means the Quran is telling you, if you find evidence that there is another God besides Allah, take him as God. To this extent, the Quran is the only religion in the world that tells you get out of Islam if you have evidence. Prophet Muhammad entered a debate against the Christians of Najran and the Quran told him, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدٌ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ Say, if Ar-Rahman has a son, I'll be the first one to worship him. Which means, we are truth seekers. Wherever the evidence will take us, we will go. This is very strong. Very strong. Because others, they tell you, no, <coughs> we know that there is something that doesn't make sense here, but it's a religious mystery. Yeah, oh, three in one and one in three, and they just want, no. In Islam, you, you should seek the evidence. And the first thing we learned when we started to learn Sharia ah is that there is no scholar greater than being asked, what's your evidence, sir? Any scholar, what's your evidence? It's not impolite. It's not improper. It's normal. So this, before you just forward emails to people, just wait a minute and listen and, 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 and read well. What, what are you forwarding? Is it truth or not? Is there a, a evidence on this or not? Uh, the story of Ashab al-Kahf, also, verse number 19. وَكَذَلِكَ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ لِيَتَسَاءَلُوا بَيْنَهُمْ قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما In time we walk them when Allah walk them up after 300 years and 309 years Hijri and 300 years uh, Gregorian calendar In time we walk them up and they began to question one another one of them asked how long have you been here? And some answered, a day or a part of a day. They didn't know that they slept for 300 years. A day or a part of a day. And someone said, your Lord knows best how long you have been here. One of you go to the city and with your coins and find something good to eat. Which means, don't keep wasting time. Are we going to... Yani keep wasting our time discussing how long did we sleep? How long did we sleep? I don't know, maybe a day, maybe half a day. Uh, and then someone said, hey, come on. Khalas, Allah knows best. We, Allah knows how much it is. None of us has watches. Said someone to buy us some food. We're hungry. Which means what? Don't waste time. Be very time sensitive. But we waste a lot of time. And you know, the case with Muslims. We're not even... Yani, accurate with timings at all, we are not punctual. 
give you a, an appointment at 6. This means that you can come at 7. And if I don't show up at 8, you can leave at 9. And then when we say 6 exactly, in Egypt we say 6 British. British? It's Islamic. It's Islamic. Again, verse number 22, also amazing. It's a commentary on the story of, of Ashab al-Kahf. It says, سَيَقُولُونَ ثَلَاثَةُ الرَّابِعُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ سَادِسُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ رَجْمًا بِالْغَيْبِ وَيَقُولُونَ سَبْعَةٌ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ قُلْ رَبِّي أَعْلَمُ بِعِدَّتِهِمْ مَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ فَلَا تُمَارِي فِيهِمْ إِلَّا مِرَاءً ظَاهِرًا وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِ فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا Some say the sleepers were three and their dog made four. Others say they were five and the dog made six, guessing in the dark. And some say they were seven and their dog made eight. Say, now we're waiting for the answer to come from Allah. Hmm. How many were they? Say, Say, O Prophet, say, my Lord knows best how many they were. Only a few have, may, have real knowledge about the real number. So do not argue, but stick to what is clear and do not ask any of these people about this number. Which means focus on the lesson. Did you leave the lesson and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, uh, all the lessons in the story and you're focusing how many were they? So the Quran could have told us they were seven or four or five, but says, no, I'm not going to tell you. Focus on the important. Stop wasting time. Stop discussing nonsense. Well, after this lesson, someone in Washington, D.C., raised his hand in the questions and answers session. And he told me, do we still have the genes of Adam in our genes? Subhanallah, after listening to, yani, subhanallah, I said, I don't know. And, and in Uganda, I was asked, what was the nationality of Adam? Wallah al -Azim. I said, Ugandan. <laughs> hmm. Does it make any difference? This is the issue. Focus on the important. Focus on what benefits you. Benefits you. Again, we are now dealing, now, uh, now like that we, we dealt with the manhaj al-fikr, the way of thinking. Now let's deal a little bit with al-qiyam, the values, the human values. <coughs> Verse number seven and number eight. They say, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا لِنَبْلُوَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُوزًا We have adorned the earth with attractive things so that we may test people to find out which of them do best. But we shall reduce all this to barren dust. Which means everything around you, all these beautiful cars and money in the accounts and all this, the real value is zero value this will all be dust one day this is the real value of this life okay why did allah decorate it and made it beautiful for us to test us <laughs> to test them it's like when you give your son 20 pounds you're not giving him the 20 pounds to sustain himself or pay his rent no it's just you want to monitor what is he gonna do with 20 pounds is he going to go and spend them all and buy chewing gum and chocolate? And this boy next time, you will not give him 20 pounds because he's extravagant. Maybe he will buy with 10 pounds the things that he wants and he will save 10 pounds. This boy is better than the other one. But maybe he will spend like 7 pounds and save like 7 pounds and give in charity 7 pounds. This boy is the best. So you're monitoring. You're testing him with the money. That's exactly your case with Allah. Allah is testing you with everything you have. Your health, your wealth, your children, your spouse, your beauty, your... Because I'm talking, there are sisters here. 
And you are also beautiful, by the way, Yan. Okay? And uh, your beauty, your intelligence, your... Allah is testing you. Testing you. What are you gonna... How are you gonna use these gifts? In the haram? Or as he wants? It's just... You, you don't really have anything, brothers. You really want to know how much you have? Look at yourself entering your grave. Those three people that we prayed janazah for them now... Did they have anything in their kafan? The kafan doesn't have pockets. You know why? Because your credit cards expire as soon as you die. Cash is not accepted there. What's accepted there? Money wire transfer. You transfer to your account with Allah. By spending in charity, you're transferring. And here, if you're transferring some money from one bank to the other, it may not go totally there. There can be some transaction fees taken from them. But with Allah, there is no transaction fees. He multiplies even by 10 at least, up to 700 and even more. So when we read this and Allah tells me that I have made everything on earth just a test for you, this should not pass like that. Stop and think. What do you really have? And think that this is a test. Be careful. And also when he says that everything will be one day like rubble and dust. And if you fight with someone or, or a neighbor for something materialistic or a parking bay or something like that, just leave it for him. It's rubble, it's dust at the end. Let not the world life pleasures control your heart like that. Verse number 16. It says, وإذا اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأووا إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا. <coughs> now that you have left, those are the youth who stepped in the cave. They started talking to each other when they entered the cave. And they said, some of them said to the others, now that you have left, left such people and what they worshipped instead of God, Take refuge in the cave. God will shower his mercy on you and make you an easy way out of your ordeal and make the cave comfortable to you. It means, mirfaqa means, and comfort you. Allah will comfort you. Comfort me where? In the cave? There's no chairs, no beds, nothing. It's a cave. Yes. If you have iman in your heart, you will be comfortable. If you don't have iman in your heart, you will not be comfortable even if you're staying in, a, in, a, in the presidential suite of, uh, of uh, Four Seasons Hotel. Still not comfortable. And we know those people who are so wealthy like that, we hear that they threw themselves from the balcony. Why? Is this man crazy? He has a lot of things. He should enjoy it because he is not comfortable. All this money and he's not comfortable. You can be in a cave and comfortable because it's about here. It's about the heart. Brothers, comfort is here. And the Prophet وسلم, said, The most that I fear that it may deceive you is the gifts of Allah and the wealth. Allah can give you a gift, but it may, it may not be really a gift. It may be a test. It may be a trick. Something to, to stutter, to be tricked with. Be careful how you deal with the gifts of Allah. Always deal with it the way Allah wants. Allah gave you strength. Don't go and oppress others. Don't beat up people in the street. So what do you do with this strength? You defend the weak or you help the, the weak so you see someone carrying things and you're waiting for someone go and carry with him going of course here in this country they will think do you want money or something I don't want money I'm just helping you because you are paying zakah for your muscles like that <coughs> you are spending from your power <coughs> zakah is what spending from your money there is zakah on everything that Allah gave you Zakah of ilm. Okay. Zakah of your money is how much? 2.5%. Right? Good. Zakah of ilm. Knowledge. 
If you know something, spread it. بلغوا عني ولو آية. Spread the message from me even if it's one آية. So the issue is when you read these verses, stop and contemplate. It can take you the whole day to read Surah Al-Kahf. We're not in a hurry. We are not in a hurry. This is how you deal with the message of Allah. Uh, uh, verse number 34. Still we are dealing with the values. No, we spoke about this. خلاص, I'm sorry. We spoke about this. Uh, verse number 45. I'm sorry. Verse number 45. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فأصبح هشيما تذروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا Tell them too what the life of this world is like We send water down from the skies and the earth's vegetation absorbs it But soon the plants turn to dry stubble scattered about by the wind God has power over everything which means that the example of this life pleasures all the cars and money and strength and beauty and intelligence is like what is like water that gets absorbed which means very short lifespan the water comes down it gets absorbed and then it's lost by the it's scattered in the stubble scattered uh, of the dry plants which means zero value and very short and very short this reminds me with an example if someone is given the uh, chance to choose between something gold made of gold and something made of very cheap plastic like a cup of plastic either he keeps the cup of plastic for himself and owns it or just holds a watch made of gold for a second and leave it. Which one will you choose? The cup of plastic, because you will own it, so you will use it. But to just hold a piece of gold for a second and leave it, if someone chooses, no, I want to hold the gold for one second. This is probably stupid. But what if the opposite? If you are told, this is something made of gold. It's, it's a wealth. Either you own it or you hold this plastic thing for a second and leave it. If someone chooses to hold the plastic for a second and leave it, this is what? Crazy! Because he's refusing the, to own the gold, the, ever la the lasting gold, and he's choosing just something very cheap. You just hold it and leave it temporarily like that. That's exactly our example. When we give priority and we choose the temporary world pleasures which are cheap and we sacrifice the everlasting gold the everlasting pleasures of Allah the real pleasures of Allah so this is the problem here when we prefer the less important and we just sacrifice the most important uh, Verse number 46, المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا Wealth and children are the attractions of this worldly life. It's true. But lasting good works have a better reward with your Lord and give better grounds for hope. <coughs> Which means that sometimes we sacrifice and we do not really do yani, the good work that Allah wants from us because of our children and our wealth. So we don't really close the store and go to pray because uh, money. Uh, I go back home and I find my children playing. So I say, okay, I'm not going to pray Isha in the mosque because I, wanna, I don't want to come back and see them and find that they're slept. So because of the children, because of the money, sometimes we sacrifice the most important, which is to please God. You can love your children. You have to love your children. And you can love money, by the way, but not more than Allah. 
You should have your priorities. Set your priorities. And there are so many uh, lessons in this surah. I will quickly mention these lessons. And then, inshallah, maybe after Ramadan, after we finish this spiritual purification, we can go through Surah Al-Kahf for at least 10 weeks, if you want. And understanding Surah Al-Kahf and the lessons in Surah Al-Kahf. It's like the importance of seeking knowledge. You know the lesson of the importance of seeking knowledge is in verse number 60. This is maybe the only lesson that I will give you today before we close. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُبًا And remember when Moses told his assistant that I will not stop walking even if I walk for decades until I reach the junction of the two seas. Why would Musa want to walk for about a century to reach the junction of the two seeds. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explains this for us in a famous hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Ubay ibn Ka'ab narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Moses stood up preaching in the sons of Israel. Preaching to the sons of Israel. And they asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, who's the most knowledgeable person on earth? You know, your cousins, they have yani, strange questions sometimes. So Moses said, I... Moses actually didn't get the answer from Allah, but he thought that he is the messenger of that time, and he is one of the mightiest five messengers of Allah, so probably he is the one. So he said, I, the Prophet ﷺ says, فَعَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ لَمْ يَرُدَّ الْعِلْمَ إِلَيْهِ So Allah blamed him. Why didn't he say, Allahu A'lam? He should have said, only Allah knows best. And then Allah tells him who is the most knowledgeable. So Moses said, Oh Allah, is there anyone else more knowledgeable than I? Allah said, Yes, one of my servants at the junction of the two seas. Moses said, Oh Allah, how can I meet him? Why did Moses want to meet him? To kill him and become the most knowledgeable? Of course not. It's to learn from him. So Moses was ready to walk for a hukuba means less than a century, about 80 years, decades just to meet one person who has more knowledge to learn from him. And if I tell someone there is a good lesson today in Frinsbury Park, Moscow, I say, are you crazy? You want me to go to Frinsbury Park to just attend a lesson? Moses was ready to walk for 80 years. You see here. So the importance of seeking knowledge, there are the etiquettes of seeking knowledge. What are the etiquettes of seeking knowledge? We see people sometimes coming to the mosque while we are giving the lesson, they say, Assalamu alaikum. And people say, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. It is against the etiquettes, by the way. When you enter and there is a dars or there's a lesson, you don't say assalamu alaikum. You should always say assalamu alaikum, except when you see someone reciting Quran or someone in a lesson or someone in the bathroom. So if you look at this, you feel some, see sometimes in the i'tikaf someone uh, reading the Quran and someone comes, he says, Assalamu alaikum, say, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And they look at him. And he goes, because you distracted him. So don't distract people. Okay? Haqiqat al da'wah, of course, there are, that's a whole lesson, 45 minutes, about the etiquettes of seeking knowledge. What are the real da'wah? What is the real da'wah to Allah? Ahamiya dhikrillah, the importance of the remembrance of Allah. Qimat al insan fi qurbihi min Allah. Your real value is in your, is how close you are to Allah. Not how rich you are. Not how beautiful you are. Not how intelligent you are. It's how close to Allah you are. What did Allah prepare for the unjust people, al zalimin What did Allah prepare for the righteous people? Something very important, which is Sunnatullahi fil asbab. Which is uh, an asbab. Oh. I don't know how to say this. There is something called the divine traditions. Like there is the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. There is also sunnah of Allah. Traditions of Allah. And among them is al-asbab. Allah have made things reason for other things. So how to understand this? And the asbab, that there are things that can be the reason of other things. And that's why you need to work in order to earn money. 
You can say, okay, I will keep praying to Allah to give me money, and then you will not receive anything. You have to work to earn money. This is a divine tradition. Anyone, a Muslim or a non-Muslim who will do so, he will earn money. So anyway, this is a whole lesson. It's a very uh, good one, inshallah. Hopefully I can have the chance to give it to you one day. Awlawiyyat. Understanding your priorities. How can we understand the priorities? I think I gave this here. It was the uh, simplification of the fiqh of priorities and how to prioritize things and how to, yani, to choose between two good things. Because Ibn Taymiyyah said, the wise man is not the one who knows good from evil. Anyone can know good from evil. The wise man is the one who knows the better of two good things and the worst of two bad things. How to prioritize and how to choose. Jaza'u salah. If you are righteous, what will be your reward from Allah in this life and in the hereafter? The constitution of a Muslim, the sharia. What is the truth about sharia? Some people think that the sharia is cutting off hands. This is reduction. They're reducing the sharia. Sharia mainly is human rights. Give people their human rights. And the, the last lesson can be about at humbleness, inshallah. Like that, we finished. If you have, I think I have like two, three minutes for questions and answers. So I'll take like one question or two. So any question, brothers? Sorry, sisters. Can't take your questions. Huh. They send me emails, by the way. My email is bombarded by the sisters here, Allah. So anyone here wants to ask, to ask a question? Yes. Somewhat? Summary. I, mean, Summary. I, I did that in the beginning. I said, again, 110 verses. All of them are Meccan. 71 of them are stories. And 39 of them are commenting on the stories or scenes from the hereafter. And the, the Surah Al-Kahf is uh, mainly reforming four things. Your set of beliefs, your way of thinking, and your... Who will uh, help me? Set of beliefs, way of thinking... What are in your values? Recorded? It's recorded. It will be on YouTube tomorrow morning, inshallah. Brother Hazelnut is with us. Brother Bunduk. <laughs> Bunduk means Hazelnut. So, yes, yeah. <coughs> la, la, la. If you're going to ask from this distance, you have to raise your voice. Uh, the four fitness of Dajjal. I said that Dajjal will come with fitna in deen, in religion. And with fitna in wealth. And fitna in science and knowledge. And fitna of authority. So the four stories deal with the four types of tribulation and tests. So if you digest the lessons of these four stories, you will be able, inshallah, to pass through these tests. The Dajjal can be either a person or a jama'ah, or a country, but it, it will have those four main tests. Knowledge, money, no moment, knowledge, money, wealth, and authority. Can we take this one? Last one. What time, day or night? If you read it properly, it will take you all day until the night. Surat, okay. Surat al-Kahf, the Prophet ﷺ said, read it on, uh, on Fridays, which means after Asr of Thursday until next Asr on Friday. So the night of the Friday, the, yani, the night of Thursday in Arabic, it is called the night of Friday. In, in the Arabs, it called the night before the night of the next day. Okay. Jazakumullah khairan, barakallahu feekum, and see you inshallah after Ramadan. Uh, check uh, the Facebook, my Facebook page, Father Solomon, for the announcement about the spiritual purification because we may give it on the 1st of August, inshallah, the 7th session, inshallah, to, con to continue. Assalamu alaikum.